All right, guys. Today, we are going to work on uh, setting the points on our Everlast 255 EXT. But uh, this should apply to pretty much any TIG welder that is ACDC. Um, even the older transformer style, like the uh, Miller Sinker Wave, uh, they're, they're the same way. They've got points. Um, now, your, your adjustment for that is going to be different depending on what make you have. Um, we switched out all of our stuff from Miller uh, about five years ago to Everlast. Um, this machine replaced my Dynasty. Um, I had a Dynasty 300 that um, I spent way too much money on and the control board went out on it. I think after like three months and uh, had to ship it back to them for four to six weeks, which turned into eight weeks. And uh, I am a welder by trade, so I have to have a welder. So I had seen uh, these guys' booth at PRI one year and I had uh, tested one of their machines and, and I really liked it. So and they're like a third of the cost and two times the warranty. It has five a five-year warranty. So I went ahead and picked this machine up and uh, ran flawless for two years. Um, I started having a sticky gas solenoid on it. So I asked on the Everlast Facebook page if anybody else had had that issue. And a guy messaged me and said, hey, give me a call. So I called him, and it was the owner of the company, Oleg Gladstein. Um the actual owner of Everlast who, you know, didn't have to take his time out to talk to me, but he did. And he assured me that I would have my parts drop shipped uh, immediately and his techs would walk me through the repair, which they did. And that sold me on Everlast. Um, I sold that Dynasty when I got it back. I sold my Miller 252. Um, replaced everything with Everlast and have had nothing but amazing uh, experience with them. If you're going to buy a TIG welder, MIG welder, plasma cutter, anything, um, they've got some badass new models that are all that in one uh, multi-process. They've got a brand new ACDC TIG, MIG, and plasma cutter all in one. Um, I'm hoping that's going to be my next machine. But anyway... Enough about that. Uh, I don't get paid to, to, to even, you know, rep those guys. I am just like any other customer. That's just my experience with them. Um, so I've had this machine for almost five years. Um, I'm noticing that on AC power, when I'm going to take aluminum, my arc is kind of all over the place and taking a few minutes, or not a few minutes, it's taking a few seconds to establish an arc and so I know it's getting time to adjust my point so I'm going to walk through that with you guys. I went ahead and uh, already unloosened the screws but there are six screws on the back of the machine. There are four on the back and two underneath. You're going to pull those out, pull your cover back, your handle's going to come off, right? Now, you're gonna loosen up your all of your screws on your cover itself, and just slide that back and pull it off, okay? Now, this is the perfect opportunity for you to blow out your machine. I try to blow mine out monthly, but it still gets covered in dust uh, that you can't get out unless you take the cover off. Make sure it's unplugged and you're using dry air. Um, if you go, if you forget to unplug it, you go blast this thing and you have moisture in your, in your line, uh, you could fry it. And if you've got metal dust all over, you can still fry it with dry air if you don't unplug it. So I recommend that. Uh, and the company recommends that you, uh, you blow these out periodically. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take the camera and do a little bit of wobbly uh, video for a second, but what I used was a Phillips, yeah, you could use a screwdriver to take off the covers. Um, I've got a fine tip flathead screwdriver and I've got a 12 millimeter open end wrench and that's all you're gonna need. Okay. 
so let's come around here again uh, shaky video so you're gonna look at the front of the machine and, and, and if you notice when you have your cover on and you stab your pedal you hear that buzzing noise and you'll you'll actually see a blue light coming out of the front of this thing if you pay attention um, that's that's coming from this okay these are your points and this is your high frequency board okay that's what allows you to TIG weld aluminum so we're gonna look up underneath here and actually it's not just a TIG aluminum but uh, high frequency arc start which is pretty much the standard nowadays um, but if you look up underneath here these are your points right here now there's a gap in between these two points and that's very crucial that it's at 0 .035 so 35 thousandths of an inch okay that's going to give you optimum um, arc start so I think they recommend anywhere from 30 to 40 thousandths but 35 thousandths is is uh, what I had written inside my machine from the last time I did this which I did this about two years ago just to confirm um, so if you look on on the side here oh I lost my wrench so if you look on the side here there's a brass screw set screw with a brass jam nut and they've got paste on it from the factory to show that it was locked in place and you know if you ever had to send it in or whatever they could see that you messed with this but they recommend doing this so it's not going to void your warranty so what you're going to do is you're going to get your screwdriver on here be careful because you can break these by pushing too hard or cranking too hard on them you're going to put your screwdriver in here and while you have your screwdriver in there I'm only using one hand because I have the camera, but uh, you're going to go ahead and get on this lock nut. Oh man, I was on it earlier. So you're going to get on this lock nut or jam nut like this with your screwdriver and you're going to back that nut off, okay? I would back it off, um, you know, at least one full turn so that you have room to adjust it in, okay? And now you're going to use a set of feeler gauges, which I don't know where the hell I put them. Give me just a second. Okay, so I've got my feeler gauges now, and my set, I've got an angled set like this, and um, I don't actually have one that's 35 thousandths, so what I did was I took one that's 10 thousandths and one that's 25 thousandths, and you add those together, and you've got 35 thousandths. So now, once you back that screw off, you should have plenty of room to fit these feeler gauges in between those points, okay? Now, I've got mine, I can slide them in and out with no resistance or very little resistance. You want them touching, but you've gotta be very careful because if you over tighten this screw trying to get this super tight you're gonna spread those points out and then when you pull your feeler gauge out they're gonna spring back together and you're actually gonna have a tighter gap or possibly touching um, so you just want to tighten that you just want to tighten that screw up until it's touching your feeler gauge okay and you've got just slight resistance now once you've done that you're gonna put your flathead screwdriver back in there, holding it firmly as you tighten up that nut, okay? Once you've tightened that down, you're good to go. Your points are adjusted. Now, you could leave the cover off of the machine, plug it in, and try to establish an arc and see if it made any improvement at all, um, which I guarantee you it will. And like I said, after a couple of years, um, you will need to do this. Um, but use this time to blow out the machine. Uh, again, make sure it's unplugged. Make sure that if you plug this in to test your arc, 
you don't touch anything, you're not blowing it out while you're doing that, and everything, there's nothing that could fall on it and uh, damage anything. Um, but yeah, that's a, a quick tutorial on how to adjust your points. Like I said, uh, pretty much any ACDC TIG um, nowadays is going to have that high frequency arc start. Um, that is what allows you to start the arc without touching your tungsten to the material. If anybody's been around long enough to have a scratch start TIG, that's exactly what the high frequency arc start does is it replaces that method okay so um, those points are very crucial okay and you could possibly have metal dust in between those two so when you put your feeler gauge up in there i'd kind of rub it back and forth and uh, clean out any dust that might be in there but anyway michael juggernaut welding and fabrication out of calhan colorado um, follow us on facebook uh, instagram or uh, you know subscribe to our channel I'd really appreciate that and if you guys have any questions feel free to contact me like I said it's at juggernaut Wellfab, Facebook Instagram YouTube just hit me up and um, I can try to help you with any questions you have but uh, honestly their service department is so amazing you probably won't have to but if it's a weekend hit me up <laughs>